Welcome back, everybody, to Unconditional Surrender in Europe, game designed by Salvatore Vasta, published by GMT Games. Uh, I'm going to take a couple minutes, uh, just a 30-second blurb here. Um, if you're interested in this game, it is on the GMT P500 for a third printing, which will have all the updated rules and some of the optional rules, so you'll know how to use all those funny-looking uh, oh, yellow triangle counters that are in the mix. Um, so if you're interested in this game, go sign up for it and see if you can't get a copy of it to play yourself. With that, this is the Thousand Year Reich series. Um, England has fallen, fell in 19, late 1940, like around August or something like that. Um, it is uh, dribbling in forces into North America, not really able to do much of anything. Uh, we are getting ready to go into... Uh, May of 1940, and the weather is fair everywhere. So you can kind of guess what's going to happen here. Uh, 1941, I should say. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, this is me just... The Axis declare war on the Soviet faction. So, things happen over here. So, what we're doing here is certain things... Uh, the policy evaluation marker, which, if he hadn't declared war on me this turn, I would have rolled at the end of the turn to see if Russia was coming in anyway. Um, didn't happen, because he declared before it would even be a die roll. So that goes on to the May turn. And then the appeasement ends, pact ends, markers, of 1942, moves to the, uh, it gets flipped over, and put in the end of turn. When you look in the playbook, as long as he declares war on me before July of 1942, you know, by July of 1942, it goes in 1945. If you declare war on both factions by July of 1940, it goes into July of 1944. And if you declare war on both of the factions after July of 1941, it will go into uh, July of 46. That's part of the playbook of this scenario. So the variable ending, usually it ends up in... July of 45, but I've heard people do the short fuse. I haven't tried one of those games yet. I'm not sure how that would go. Um, and then there's also the... I was in one game where, where it was going to go to July of 46, but my opponent didn't want to spend several months just trying to defend with the Germans when he was sure that he was lost. So... Uh, anyway, we go on here. Uh, what's going on here? There we go. So now I have to set, I set the Americans to six turns from when this happened, which was May, and all of their reinforcements move up. We are playing variable entry, so that's why you see these stacks moving like this. You'll also see on the turn track that I adjust the variable entry markers here. And then we're out of the de declaration of war phase. I can actually declare war now, which I choose not to do. And we go into economies. Russia, for one turn only, will be at 30. Germans are at 28, and they don't give anything to anybody. And the British are all the way up to 8. So now we come down to, I believe it's strategic warfare now. And did he have... Yeah, he doesn't have anything, so... Um... So he's at plus 5 again because he doesn't have anything in Stavanger. So here, any rolls of 6 plus 5 is an 11. So it doesn't matter what I roll. I just I lose a factory. And then I strategically moved for the, uh, I don't know what he did with the Germans. I don't even know if he strategically moved anything. I don't believe he did. Well, it's not on the, uh, where did he do? Well, let's back up and see what he did. Oh, he brought the uh, Africa army up here to help defend Turkey. So, no Russian Blitzkrieg into Turkey. 
And the West didn't really have one because everything's in the box, in their North America box. Um, but I did have one for the Soviets. Uh, here we go, over here. You know, I had this guy hanging out here in low, the Lvov, and he's just going to get surrounded and die. So what I decided to do was move him back to here to try and give me somewhat of a semi-coherent line to maybe make a retreat back towards the Niper. Not likely because he has all these extra Italians to move that he doesn't have to expend German production points to take empty cities and things. So um, it's a reinforced Barbarossa. Uh, he has five Italian units that he can move besides the German contingent. So he has more than enough maneuverability to just take anything he wants, which you will see. Uh, so we're into the Axis operations phase. Uh, starts off with his airplane there, goes after my first air. It's plus two to my zero. He rolls a five, of course I roll a one. And then he goes after it with this airplane. Uh, I'm minus two, he's a zero. So he, or a plus two, so he's eight. And I roll a five minus two is a three, which takes me up to five. And then I think he left it alone at, at, at five. And then he flies the Italian air up to here. This is what I was talking about. Um, and he attacks the Russian air at minus one to zero. Here he rolls his one. And I can't take advantage of it. I only roll a one. So then he goes again at minus two to minus one. It was a six minus two is a four. I roll a four minus one is a three. So again, each of us only take one. And now he's a minus three and I'm a minus two. A four minus three is a one. Two minus, a one minus two is one. So each take a sortie. Now he's at minus four and I'm at minus three. And he rolled a 5, minus 4 is a 1, I rolled a 4, minus 3 is a 1, so he just took a sortie, and he just ran himself up, so I was down to 5 sorties. And it was kind of like, eh, that didn't work. And then this garrison unit, oh, what the hell, he's doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he moved the German garrison unit there. Then he has this Italian go one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight to assault Vilnius. Then he takes the German infantry and goes one, two, three, four, five, to attack into Conus, who is now isolated. So he starts off at plus three. And I'm at zero. Well, we go to combat commitment. We both decide to commit because, see, I had an airplane still in range, and I figured might as well use it up first chance I get because it's just going to go to 60 one way or another. So I got plus two. I don't know what he did. Oh, we were having problems with... He's not on the same sequence as me. Uh, oh, this was us fighting the air combat. So he's at plus one to my minus five. So he needed to roll really high to get a DD on me and keep me from flying. He rolled a one, so I got through. And now we set the die roll modifiers. He's at plus five to my plus two. He rolled a 1 plus 5, I rolled a 6 plus 2, so I didn't even flip. And, uh, I think we went back to combat commitment, didn't we? Yeah, we went back to combat commitment. He kept committing, and I said, nah, I'm done. I want to save my tanks marker for important places like Riga and stuff. Stuff that's on the second line of defense here. So, uh,
And then he rolled a five. Two plus three. He didn't. Um, he didn't actually commit. Uh, what we're doing is because of this the speed thing. Basically, the defender. I'm the only one that really matters. Um, so one of us, once we've hidden our thing, we just announce out loud to the other one what we're doing, and we just do it that way. Um, not good for video, but that's what we're doing. Uh, anyway, he rolled a 2 plus 3 is a 5, and I rolled a 2 plus 0. So I flipped. So then he goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll attack a plus 3 to minus 2. I'm not throwing anything in there. He rolls an 8. At minus 2, I'm doesn't matter what I roll, I'm going to die. So he takes the conus. Uh, I lose willpower, and then he moves three more spaces up to there. Uh, so it will goes down to six for the guy, and f two more for the city, and then I lose a factory. And then he moves his garrison unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, into the swamp. Then he moves this infantry, one, two, three, and attacks, again at the surrounded odds, so he's plus three to my zero, I think we're in combat commitment. He goes ahead and throws in an airplane, I chose not to throw my tank. He rolls a nine, four plus five. I rolled a four, so I'm retreated. So or not, I'm retreated, so I have to be flipped because I can't. And um, he chose. To... Yeah, it was one, two, three, four, five, six. So the infantry only got one attack on on there. Then I think he resolves the assault here, maybe. Yeah, he throws in the Italian who would start off at a minus one for the city, and then plus two for the tank, so he should be at, and plus two for isolation, so he's plus three, he rolls a six, and at minus two, it doesn't matter what I roll, that will be eliminated, and the Italians will take Vilnius. And then this Italian comes one, two, three, four, five. Again, just using the Italians to get isolation bonuses. I think he went ahead and attacked. Because he's uh, plus two minus one for the city. So he's plus one to zero. Rolls a five, I rolled a two, so I was flipped. It moves the infantry up, one, two. And we'll attack at plus three. My minus two, he rolls an eight, so I'm dead. Takes breast. That was one, two, three, four, five. He had three movement points left. Not sure exactly what he did here. Yeah, he, he ran up to the north towards Minsk. He has this Italian garrison. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, surround, again, trying to surround me so that I can't retreat. Uh, not sure what's going up next. Hacking somewhere, but I can't figure out where. Oh, it must have been that infantry unit there that was attacking. Yeah, 7 8. So he's attacking. Uh, combat commitment. I did not. Oh, actually, we both committed at this point. I think I threw my, one of my tanks markers here. Thought that was a, an important hex. So he's plus four, I'm plus two. He rolls a three plus four is a seven. I rolled a three. Which the tank marker made a difference because with rolling a one, if I hadn't had the tank marker there, it would have been a DD. And I didn't have anywhere to retreat to. I wasn't isolated, but I wouldn't be able to retreat. And I would have been uh, eliminated and he could have moved in adjacent to, to, to Cernati. 
So at least now he has to spend somebody to attack a second time. Which, you know, yes, the Italians come up and do it. Zero to minus two. He rolls a six, of course. And I roll a three minus two is one, so I've eliminated. And he was allowed to move one hex out because he actually had a, I'm putting that on there for the video. He had a known zone of control there and he had um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He had one movement point left, so he went ahead and moved it forward with it. And we put it down there in the C zone, assuming that he was gonna need it again. And this infantry goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And... He's attacking at plus three to zero right now. Uh, we need combat commitment, yeah. And I decided it wasn't worth it to spend the last tank marker. Again, I'm trying to save it for Riga. I'm assuming he's going to come coming after Riga. So he did throw his airplane in from the south, so... Um, and he rolls an 11. I roll a 1, so... Just horrible. And... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh, seven, eight. Again, trying to make it so now I'm technically I am uh, surrounded here. And the next guy down the line is um, isolated because he has no retreat route and nobody adjacent to him. And that keeps him one hex closer to running across the Niper next turn. So that's a very good move for him. Uh... I think he thought about that. He said, no, I want to move up here. Then he took this Italian, put the German there, and then the Italian goes there. Um, coming from there, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's why he puts the Italian there, because the Italian's not that important to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then this German infantry. This German infantry. One, two, three, and then four, five. And he's attacking at plus four to zero. Um, he goes to combat commitment, throws in his airplane. I don't bother. Actually, I think he throws in his tanks rather than his airplane. He gets 12, so I'm eliminated with a three. And then he moves on to there. He captures Kiznev. And then the Romanians go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Capture Odessa. German infantry goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. And then this panzer goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Captures Kiev. That infantry goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And you might say, why is he doing that? Well, this silly little Russian army. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven, eight. He'd be out of supply, but it's it's one of those things that you really don't want that army to be able to go and do anything. So he's going to make sure. Uh, I don't remember if he could go that far. Let's count it again. It's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now he's got me isolated. So he doesn't want that army to leave. 
And then I'm not sure if he moves that German army. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Getting across the Duna. Now he activates the armor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then he could not attack me, but Regal will stay there. And this armor comes over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I fly away to Rezev. Nine, and I think he stopped there. And I think he has the Panzer in the south yet to move. He decided that he didn't want to stick that German out there. And I was like, you moved him. You moved way too many things now. You had, like, combats and stuff. No, you can't take back that move. I made him keep that move. It's one thing to take it back right after you move and go, oh, I don't really want it there. But he, he'd moved way too many other units and saw his line was very solid and was trying to take back a production point. I said, no. Then he moves this armored over and it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then he comes to the south and has the Turks attack Salanka. Start off at minus one, I'm at minus two. So he goes ahead and rolls, rolls a one, I rolled a one as well. Net. So he goes ahead and attacks again. Uh, he rolls a six. He rolled the defender die for some reason. So that's actually, uh, that's only a five, not a four. But it didn't matter because I did roll a six minus two, which was a four. So I held in both cases. And then this Yugoslav attacked the Greeks. So he's at zero to zero. He rolled a four. I rolled a three. Get rid of it, and then he goes. He attacks at five. A six minus one is a five, and it rolled a five. So the Tur the uh, Greeks held again against the Turks and the Yugoslavs. This Turkish army goes one, one, two, three, and this guy moves back. So he's like, ah, I don't want to be. Don't want to lose will points for lucky Russian die rolls with real armies from the Turks, because they only have eight. Then I think we're into his... I think he's just doing supply here. Let's that guy go to no supply. And then flies this airplane up. And I think that was it. And now we, we double-checked our numbers here. Um, so I am at 73. I was at 97, and I'm now down to 73. And he killed six Russian armies. He has... One, two, three, four. He has four armies pretty much bottled up and, you know, ready to kill when he gets fair weather next turn. So I'm going to end up having lost ten armies. Uh, shouldn't have left the guys in Brest and Lvov. They should have just moved back to their positions. One, The guy in Brest should have been here uh, at this hex. And uh, the other guy that was in Lvov should have been at Cernate. Then I probably should have pulled an infantry unit out of, um, down on the Turkish border and put it here to try and keep the Germans from running across the Duna so easily. So, uh, if you're going to play backwards defense with the Russians, you should play it wholeheartedly. I kind of tried to hedge my bets because it's a one-third chance that he gets fair. Otherwise, it would be poor, and then those guys probably would have held out, and I would have had time to, to move them back again. But it didn't work out that way. So... Uh, at the at the end of his operations phase, he has to 
he gets a free political success on somebody who's ceded territory, which he does. He takes Finland. And when he activates Finland, I have to put the Russians out. And I misplaced that one. He's supposed to actually be here. Which we will rectify here in a second. And he puts his Finns. He's trying to figure out what he wants to put up in the north. He puts a real guy up in the north. Real guy and a garrison in the south and a garrison in the middle. Uh, then the Russians get to place five infantry and an airplane. So one goes into Smolensk, one goes into Kursk, one goes into Kharkov, one goes into Rostov. One goes into... What's that? One, two, three, four. And I put one in Veloluki. Because I can move them. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Is what I did. And then the airplane went uh, back here. Um, I seriously thought about, if he hadn't moved the Africa army up, I would have placed that airplane like in Tiflis and tried to blitz out some of these Russians, but with the German Africa army sitting there, I'm not going to get anywhere. So I chose not to do that. Now we go into the western... Oh yeah, now we're doing all the... We have to do the conditional stuff, so you're going to see stuff pop up on the turn track. There's my lend lease, there's my reinforcements... My Urals are on there. Russian winners in December. Partisans come in in November and November. And then the factory loss marker goes on the board. And you'll notice that the British are at zero factories on their factory count. And then we were finally... And then I have to place my two surprise attack markers. That are three and four years out. 44 and 45, January. And we are done with all that. So we move on to... Western operations phase, and I move the convoy in the South Atlantic from the Africa to the South Atlantic, North Atlantic, and then into here. And then I'm done. And now we're into the Soviet operations phase. There's going to be some things done here. Uh, the guy that was sitting northwest of Kiev says, time to leave. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get in front of Bryansk. Uh, the guy in Beloluki says, no, that's too close to the German infantry. We're going to back up and get behind the mountains and the river. Um, these two guys go ahead and decide to do an attack an assault against uh, Kizhnev. Um, if I'd have been... I threw tanks, I think. Yeah, he didn't bother to even use his airplane. So I threw tanks in there, so I was... Uh, a net of plus two, because I'm one for a buddy and two for the tank, minus one for the city. And he's plus two, and I managed to roll a one. I'm really doing really well on rolling ones. And he rolled a four, so that didn't work. Because if I could have gotten a retreat out of him, then I would have taken Kizhnev. I still would not have been isolated. And he would have had to come back here and deal with these two freaking Russians in his rear, rear area, which means some of this infantry wouldn't be going forward. That was the idea. 16th, uh, what is this, the 8th? 16th Army. I don't know where the 16th Army is. So I go ahead and attack the 11th. Now here it's it's like, I'm 0 to 2. He could make it 0 to 4 if he wanted. But my thought was... Um, if he doesn't throw in his airplane, and I get a lucky split and move him, make him retreat, it doesn't really hurt him, but it puts me adjacent to Vilnius with uh, 
the ability to attack there, and if I force the Italians to retreat, I get a supply source again, which is the whole point of all this. Or I, if I get the German, you know, that that's the whole idea here. Desperation attacks. I rolled a six. I, I did my part. And he rolled a four plus two, so he got a six. If he'd have rolled a two plus two, he'd have been retreated. I'd have moved up adjacent to Vilnius, and it would have been minus one to zero. And who knows? So I had three movement points. Actually, I had five movement points left. So I, or four, six movement points. So I attacked him again at a two to zero, and then he rolled a six plus two is a eight, and two to eight means I'm flipped. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm done. So it didn't work, but it, it was desperation attacks. Now this guy goes ahead and moves up one on the rail and attacks the Turk. I throw in the airplane. And he doesn't have anything to defend with. So I'm one, and this guy helps. So I'm plus one for that, plus two for the airplane, plus three, minus one. So I'm plus two to his minus two. Why are we not? It's minus two. Why am I only plus zero? I don't understand why I'm only plus zero. I'm one, two, three, minus one. I should be plus two. Oh no, I didn't throw in the airplane. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to save the airplane because I was going to do something else with it. Um, so, plus... So the Italian Air Force can keep counter-airing my Air Force here. But the Turks and the Germans can't use it to help them attack. So, I rolled a 6. He rolled a 1. He was nice. Um, actually, any retreat would have killed it, too. So, I had a 4. 4 and 6 chance once I rolled that 6. Killed the Turk. And I moved the guy from Batan, Batum, however that's pronounced... I move him in instead of the guy on the railroad. Now this, what this does is, if you look here with zones of control and stuff, um, if he attacks this guy, unless it's this guy attacking me alone, he can retreat to here from any of these other hexes. If he attacks here, okay, if, if he attacks from here, from here, I might have to retreat back this way. Um, this guy's not going to be there very much longer, I don't think. That was my idea behind it. Let him go away, and if he really wants to take Batum, then so be it. Um, so then I was looking at the Russian airplane and where it can go, and I flew it up to Rostov. And I think I started to think about moving this guy um, I originally thought about moving this guy here to here and then attacking this thing, and I said, no, it can just retreat to here, and the next turn it comes up there. So I'm like, not a good idea, Russia. Not a good idea. So we just said we were done. That guy goes into low supply. This guy goes into low supply. That guy goes into low supply. Uh, Oh, we originally thought that he could take this guy off, and then we counted. He has one guy in Norway, only one infantry in Plymouth, and he doesn't have any real infantry sitting here in France. So he cannot let this guy uh, go to no supply and be eliminated. He has to supply him. Uh, he's not allowed to let it die. So... I pointed that out to him. I said, you can't take him off after we thought about it. It's like, you can't do that. You won't have Western... You can't voluntarily violate the the thing. So here's the Italians. Italians get their replacements, of course. Uh, the British flipped that, did that. Uh, the Russians bring down their airplanes. 
or through the upgrades, mobilization, the access didn't everything to build yet. Uh, the West uh, did build, uh, built another convoy because they could. You only build one unit a turn, so it's kind of like clunk, 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 clunk. That's what you do. Um, and there's no diplomacy because we're all fighting now. Victory check and end of turn. Uh, this is just us getting back our stuff from the turn track. Bing, bang, boom, boom. And the Russians get a factory! So they were down to 11 factories left, and then they get a Urals factory. He didn't like that very much, and I went, I had to live with it, you get to live with it. And so now we're into June. So we're going into the weather phase. Weather phase, here we go, get all that stuff up. And you have to go on the fair row for each zone to see what you get. And then he rolls a four, one, and a six. Four in the uh, cold zone. Uh, because he's in the fairs here, it becomes poor because he's on this line here. Okay, use this here. He's on that line there, which is, if he'd had poor in May, he would have had fair this turn. But instead, he got poor this turn. So the Russians catch a quick break. Um, it's fair in the middle, in the mild zone. There's not a lot going on in the mild zone, maybe in Turkey. Um, well, down in Greece. I think Greece is in the mild zone. I have to double check. Uh, no, it's below the line. So Greece is actually in the warm zone, which is bad for him because it's also poor in the in the port in that zone. <clears throat> so Greeks probably hang on for a turn, and so will the Russians or the maybe I don't know. we'll see. So we go ahead. We're going to go ahead and go through this turn because it's poor weather. We figured we could get a fast one in. Wrong turn. So, here we go through all the shenanigans of points. I do not give a point to the Greeks this turn. Uh, the Soviets got uh, a bunch of their dead armies back that they can build. The Turks have a dead army they can build. So, that's what that's all about. We've done economies. We go to strategic warfare against the Soviets. So the Soviets are at zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, because he has seven conquered countries. Or eight conquered countries, actually. And the Germans are at plus two because they have the Basra Kuwait thing. But they don't have an airplane in uh, Stravanger to get to plus three. So the Russians are plus three and the Germans are plus two. And they have submarines. So they decide that they're not going to... I don't think they, did they play them. They played them against the Russians because they really wanted to try and take a factory from the Russians as well. Then they rolled a 1. Plus 2 is a 3. And the Russians rolled a 3 plus... Or 4 plus 3 is a 7. Becomes a 3.5. Rounds up to a 4. So a 4 to a 3 is a diamond. Nothing happens. Subs come back in two turns. And he's up to plus five with the uh, with the Germans. Rolls a seven, they roll a two, so uh, it should be up to nine lost factors now. So now we're doing strategic movement. And what he did is he took this infantry unit that's kind of like not really doing much in Germany or in Russia, and just said, "Screw it, I'm going to go." Stick it back over here, where the uh, Italian airplane is in Harf. The Russians take that infantry unit there and put it in the mountains in front of Rostov to slow down any running by the Germans. Then we go into action subphase. The Axis move up at infantry, and then they move up. 
and Italian. And he chose not to do it right away, I don't think. He wanted to do some other movements. So one, two, three, four. And I think he... I'm at minus four. And he's at uh, plus two, minus two, one for the weather and one for the swamp. So he's at a zero to my minus four. He rolls a five. Doesn't matter. I die. So he goes away and it was a will point. Uh, Germans. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next to Smolensk. This German. Five, six, seven, eight. Ryansk. Italians come running. Capture Depnostrik. Deneprof. I can't say it. Denops. Denep. Uh, this Italian moves up here. Trying to make sure the German would not become isolated in any way. And then I think he actually launches an assault here with the, the German and the Romanians. They're trying to get a lucky die roll here. So he's at uh, two for German, one for the Romanian, minus one for the weather. So he's plus two to my minus two. I don't think he throws his airplane in. Or did he? Yeah, we went to combat commitment. And I went ahead and threw a tank, gave myself an extra plus one. So I'm only minus one. Uh, so I'm minus one, his plus two. Uh, so he rolled a four, plus two is a six. I rolled a six, minus one is a five, so I held. And then he just sends the Italians off on more adventures into Russia. Yugoslavs, adventures into Russia. Germans... Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he thought about it and said, nah, I don't want to really be there. I want to be out here. Because he saw, he saw what I saw, which was the guy in Smolensk could go one, two, three, and we would have a surrounded attack on him out of Bryansk, outside of Bryansk, possibly killing a German unit. He doesn't want to do that. So, I don't know where he's at now. Oh, I think he's he was thinking about how to do this. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he said, no, I can't get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Because it costs two to attack the unit beside and two for the city because it's poor weather. And he said, ah, never mind. I'll just go do this. One, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. Capture Talinan. And then he went ahead and went after Riga. I threw a tanks at it. He threw the Italian tanks and the German tanks. So he was uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because it's isolated, minus two. So he's plus five, or minus three, because he's coming across the river and into a city. So he's minus one, minus two, minus three. But he's three and two. So he's plus two, plus four, I think. Right? Plus three. All right. He's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for isolation, minus one, two, three, three. It should be at plus four, not plus three. Wouldn't have mattered. Uh, a 1 plus 4 would have been a 5, and I rolled a 5 plus 1 is a 6, so either way I would have held. 
So he decides that he'll just get it next turn. And just moves guys up to make sure I can't get away in any way. And then he can take his armor off and go gallivanting up towards Leningrad. So wait a minute, let me make sure I'm set infantry up here first. So my pans are up to here. Make sure it takes a licky. And then he moves this infantry up to here. And then he moves this armor into there. And I think he's down to like eight points left. Now he's got 12, it looks like. And then he had the Turks uh, do an attack in fair weather at uh, the ground support. He's a net of zero to my zero. Or he's minus one, actually, because of the weather and the stuff. So he rolls a three. I rolled a two, so I held. Um, now he's going after the Greeks again. He rolled a f 3 plus 1 was a 4. And I finally rolled uh, a 3 minus 2 is a 1, so I actually had to retreat and get, take the hex. So now the Greeks will be in full supply. And then this Yugoslav goes 1, 2, it's about moving this guy. It goes one, two, three, four, five. Nah, I don't care. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, and then decided that he was just going to move uh, a Yugoslav that's already uh, on the road to getting into Russia rather than trying to pull these guys out. And then he attacks with just the Yugoslav at minus one to zero, or minus two. I rolled a net one, I rolled a two. And I think he attacked with the Finns too. It's the fourth Panzer up. There. He's basically got everything up as close as he could to <coughs> to the Russian front. And then I think he's doing his supply now. And then, uh, since it is June and it's poor weather, and I don't know what he's thinking about, but I decided to try and do a pinprick. He never did take Bergen. If you've been watching along, he never marched over there. So I took the BEF with the convoy with three sorties. And we went three, four. So you can intercept me with uh, your, your dude. Uh, it, the weather is fair, so, I mean, you have a good chance of just blowing them up. He says, you'll still end up in Bergen, won't you? I went, yeah. He goes, ah, go ahead and go. I said, okay. So I did. I went up. And then we went into my supply subphase. I said, well, now i got to supply them. So I'm at net minus five, or net minus four, rather. And he is a plus one. And he rolled a three plus one is a four. I rolled four minus four. Which put me in low supply. But now his thing is gone. And now we're into Soviet's actions. This guy pulls out of the mountains, moves up two, four, six to go there. This guy goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, goes to there. 
the guy that was in front of Brienne's goes behind it. And I think I was trying to figure out where I could send the airplane. I went ahead and sent that airplane back. So I'm outside of range of the Italian air, and now I can defend those two infantry units with an airplane in the fair weather turns. So he's not going to have an easy time of getting through there. Uh, and then the guy that was in Kharkov, I said, no, 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 this is too easy for you to get an isolated on him. So I went, um, as you can see, I went one, two, three, that's okay, we'll stay here. Uh, and these two guys went to no supply. And using the rules against him in my no supply phase, I can take off a ground unit if it has a no supply marker on it. So those guys will go away and not give him two will points. So I get to save two will points that way, and I'll have somebody to build next turn. Because this turn he only killed uh, one Russian, if you look. You only eliminated one Russian. Those two guys will go in my eliminated box. These six guys are going to come out and build phase. That'll give me three guys to build next turn at the end of his July turn when he's going to make some major breakthroughs here, I'm sure. He's going to make some big, big pushes, I'm sure. Uh, it's just part of the way the game runs here in the East, especially with the amount of stuff that I have going against me. Uh, so he's... Uh, no supply phase. He takes that fourth army, finally, that was up in Glasgow, and says, just eliminate it. I'll build it back in Germany. So he has one, he has one guy garrisoning Plymouth in Germany. And then I have these guys come off, go onto the track in Soviet. No supply phase. Um, the British also in their no supply phase. You'll notice the convoy is gone. That was on purpose. Um, it should allow me, I should be able to get this convoy down to two sorties. So even if he throws his airplane in Stravenger, he'll be minus two at the end of his turn um, to try and intercept me here. I should be able to move in and give myself full supply, which means I'll last for several turns before he can actually do anything about it, which is the whole point. I'm just trying to get in his hair, make him have to spend a production point here and there over in the west instead of all of it in the east. He's only at 28 until 1942 at best. So, you know, if I can make him spend a point or two, a point to four over in the west, great, because that's that many less points of actual Germans moving over here. Unfortunately, he has lots of Italians that can just fill in the, the gaps for him, but I got to do what I can. Uh, so now he takes his airplanes, takes these two, took down three. He only had six. Took down too many airplanes. He took down too many airplanes. Well, I'm going to have to call him on that. He took three, six, nine in airplanes, and he only had six points left. Something's wrong there. All right. Well, 
I'll have to double check that before we start up again. And then I built, uh, you know, built another convoy over here. That's all I can really do with my points. Replenished, I moved a guy, replenished one, and built a new one so I can keep up that shenanigan for a while. Then the, the Russians build their six armies here. One goes in Moscow. Got to have one in Moscow. One goes in Volkhov. What is that called? Volkhov. Uh, one goes in Volkhov. One goes in Smolensk. And last one goes into Rostov. So, yes, I'm giving up Kharkov. You'll have to fight for Kursk and Orel. Um, it's not much of a line. It'll probably just be shattered by the Germans. He likes to roll sixes and makes me roll ones. So, no diplomacy phase. We go to uh, end of turn phase where we just get back our stuff. The Allies finally get an Ultra and a Partisans. Germans get tanks. Italians get tanks. And we're in July. We know what the weather's going to be in July, so we don't have to roll for that. And go to Declaration War Phase, and we move some things into the... Set everything up. <coughs> and then we lost communication here, and then we started... It's like, this is what I'm going to do! Uh -huh. I'm going to run up here and isolate Smolensk! And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you think you're going to do. That's fine. I actually have a, a plan for that. And there we go. We are done with June of 1941. So this was May and June 1941. Uh, Western Allies are pinpricking in Norway, just like they pinpricked for a turn or two in uh, in Kuwait. Uh, just trying to make him have to spend production points to do things. If I can distract him from... If I make him spend a couple German production points in... Norway, uh, you know, it's better for me than it is for him. Uh, the British don't really have a lot that they can do. They just have to keep chipping away at building units here and there. Um, other than that, like I said, that's it for uh, the initial turns of Barbarossa. Uh, as always, I'm Dren608. If you like my videos, please subscribe. If you would hit that like button for me so that the algorithms in YouTube will keep this thing uh, up for other people to be able to find and, and watch. I'd appreciate it. Uh, until we meet again, stay safe and bye-bye.